Good afternoon and thanks for stopping by. What we're going to be doing today is taking a look at six different signal tracers that I've taken and built from various schematics uh, over the past probably two years or whatever. And uh, what we're testing for today is just sensitivity. Uh, how weak of a signal produces an audible tone. Now, since everybody's hearing is different and I have tinnitus, so mine isn't that great. I'm using a, a thousand hertz tone. And what I did was uh, download an app called Spectroid for my phone and I set it up like this with the uh, speaker right next to the phone and I found that uh, I could take and hear consistently uh, when the tone was at minus 50 dB. So uh, what I did when I was uh, testing these is I adjusted the uh, uh, input signal strength until I got exactly negative 50 dB. That way they, they were all the same. You know, it wouldn't be very up and down, uh, you know, because of my hearing or whatever. It's a, a good consistent measurement. So I hope that was the best way to do it. Now the first one we're going to be looking at is a signal tracer. This is actually the one that I took the front end for from for my uh, for the LM380. Uh, <clears throat> you can see he, you know, it's got the uh, well he has MPF102. We're using the J310. Uh, it's exactly the same uh, input, and then he used an LM386 for the output there. And he also has uh, a DC noise test, which I built it in. I couldn't understand exactly what it's supposed to do. But anyway, that's the circuit. And... This is what it looks like in my build. And this one here, I could take in here consistently at uh, 0.9 millivolt. Uh, anything less than that, uh, I couldn't hear and uh, it wasn't registering, you know, at minus 50 dB on the, uh, uh, in the app. So to me, the sensitivity of this is, is the 0.9 millivolt. Now the second word we're going to look at is I took uh, a Heathkit IT5283 and built the front end to that and then added an LM386 amplifier to the output. Now this one here also, as built here, it looks like this, and it also has sensitivity of 0.9 millivolts. Now the third one we're going to look at is the original uh, Heath kit. IT5283. This is a diagram of the, the front end of it. This is what I took and built and, and put on that other one on my new version of it. And then this is the amplifier. They use a uh, four transistor amplifier on it. And the build looks like this. 
Now this had a sensitivity of 0.33 millivolt. But this one here, if anybody built it, I'd strongly suggest that they took and built it into a uh, metal or metalite container because if there's no input at all to it, it very easily takes and goes into oscillation by itself. It's the, the front end's a little too sensitive, a little too resonant. Now I didn't have that problem on the new build, but with the transistor amplifier, it seems to do that. Now, next one we're going to take a look at is our PTRAF that Doug and I have been working on. The schematic for it. And this is what my build looks like of it. And this also had a sensitivity of 0.33 millivolt. Next on our list is the Aussie signal tracer that Doug's been working on. Uh, this is a view of the original schematic. I took and used this view instead, which has my modifications on it. And with these modifications, with the uh, LM318 set for uh, high. Uh, the sensitivity on this was 0.23 millivolts. And the final one we're going to take a look at is this. This is the Restore Old Radio's uh, signal tracer. He uses an LM741 and an LM386. And he has it set up with a dual potentiometer so that the, uh, the gain and the volume are, are, you know, ganged together. With this set for maximum sensitivity, It had a, a sensitivity of 0.18 millivolts. It was it was the most sensitive of all of them in a standard stable build. Now the reason I say that is I took that uh, modified Heath kit with the uh, IT5283 front end and the uh, uh, 386 amplifier and I added a 10 microfarad capacitor here across the LM386 to take and boost its gain. Built that way, it has a sensitivity of less than 0.9. I could not, or less than 0.1. I could not turn my source down low enough where I where it was uh, less than 50 dB or minus 50 dB the only trouble with this is this you know like the original is very very prone to oscillation so it, I, I wouldn't recommend it but it is I mean you know it built correctly maybe on a uh, a ground plane circuit board or something like that you know this may be you know, more sensitive, but uh, I wouldn't recommend it because it's it, it's it's too unstable when there's no signal going into it. So to me, it's not usable. But it is interesting that you know it, it you know it was that sensitive. So I hope everybody who's been you know following along with our builds or whatever will take and find this interesting. Um. They I mean they're all you know all less than a millivolt, so I mean all the circuits are are actually usable, 
Uh, depends on what you're comfortable building with, what parts you have in your parts bin. You know, if you don't have any JPETs around, you know, go for one of the transistorized ones. Uh, you know, they, they could all be made to take and work quite well. I'd like to thank everybody for stopping by. Have a good day.